Hi everyone, my name is Sharon Cho. Um, today I'll be talking about um, a testing library called SignOnJS. Um, um, SignOn is a standalone um, testing, unit testing library for JavaScript. It provides five subs and mocks and it can be used extensively for building services in Node.js and it also supports uh, testing objects in your client-side code. Um, so um, I want to first quickly go over the testing process um, and then um, introduce um, mocking libraries um, and show you where a mocking library will play in the testing process. Um, and then we will go into further details about um, some utilities that SignOn um, provides, including test doubles. Um, and there's um, spy subs and mocks and test doubles. And there are some helper um, functionality to help with uh, making fake timers and fake server requests. And, um, and hopefully we can get to the best practice for using SignOn. Um, so this is a test pyramid. Um, at the very bottom, um, we usually start with unit testing. And um, that's when we test um, the smallest testable code. And it's usually one method at a time. Um, you, um, so our goal is to test under one system. We don't want to touch a server or a database quite yet. Um, that's when we get into integration. Um, that's when we call multiple server um, and et cetera. Um, so our goal is um, to use mocking library during the unit testing part so that we can simplify the calls and not worry about um, results, waiting, waiting for calls on the, the server side or calling to the database and, um, and saving time when we use um, timeouts. Um, so when we're doing unit testing, we try to follow test-driven development. And um, the first step is usually to write your code first so that it fails and then change it as minimally as possible um, so that the test passes. Um, and then um, we refactor and continue the cycle. Um, but um, this can be actually um, difficult if your function is relying on a external system. Um, so if you're calling um, an Ajax call, um, you have to expect that your results are going to be um, what you expected, but that's not always the case. Um, your res the results can be affected by a um, number of things. So what we want to do is um, make sure our tests don't fail um, trivially um, so that we know where the failure is, c is um, coming from on your side. Um, so this is where SignOn comes in. Um, the idea of SignOn is that it replaces your methods with um, mocks. And these mocks um, are called test doubles in SignOn. And they kind of intercept um, the actual calling of the function. And then by doing so, it will um, immediately um, return back um, the results of executing that function. Um, and the reason why we use this library, um, as opposed to other libraries that have some concept of using mocks, um, it's just much more extensive. So like we've been using Jasmine before, and in Jasmine, they have spies as well. But that functionality is very limited in Jasmine. So in SignOn, they have uh, much more things you can do, like building custom mocks and custom functionality. Um, and SignOn, um, JS is, is JavaScript um, specific, but other programming languages do use a mocking library as well. So um, I believe uh, Java uses um, a library called Makito and Java. Um, so um, yeah, you can check those out as well. Um, so a brief uh, origin story of how SignOn started. Um, I guess first off, there is a debate of the pronunciation. Um, so like people say Sinon and other, other things because um, there's confusion with like signing on. But um, the developer, Christian Johansson, um, he's the one who wrote the documentation. And he actually named it after a um, Greek mythological character who played a role in um, convincing the Trojans to take in the horse. And so I think that name is very appropriate <laughs> um, for this mocking library. So we'll go with that name, uh, pronunciation. <laughs> um, so, so the first test double is something we should be very familiar with. Um, they're called spies. And um, spies um, 
all they really do is they just get information about your function call. So <laughs> they're only useful if you just want to verify that something happened and you can record the type of information you want. So in the code example, um, you can call spy as an anonymous function or wrap it in a um, existing function. Um, and then they have an API which can provide you information about that call. So how many times it was called, uh, what arguments it was called with. And the bottom um, part of the code um, has a small test using spy and what we're doing is we're wrapping um, jQuery's Ajax method with a spy. And then we will um, do a um, Ajax call, um, a, we'll do um, dot get, and then we'll just have to make sure to restore it uh, to unwrap the spy so it doesn't carry over to any other tests and cause errors along the way. Uh, and then we can um, check to see if it was called. Um, so a nifty thing with sign-on is it has its own assertion library if you don't want to use um, something like chai. So that's how spies are used. Um, the next one are stubs. Um, they're actually a lot more um, versatile than spies. So they, they are like spies with additional functionality. Um, they have a spy API. Um, and they, uh, what makes them different though is that they replace um, the entire, um, like the, the original code. Um, and you kind of put in, like a, you put the stub in um, and give it custom behavior. So you never actually call the function that was originally there. Um, so when will we, when will we use stubs? Because um, it's very useful, but it's hard to determine when to use stubs. So there are um, two um, scenarios I would think of. Um, so the first one is when you want to control how a code behaves and lead it towards a specific path. And um, this might be useful when you want to force it to throw an error and test for error handling. Um, the second one um, is when we want to, um, when we have a function that has an asynchronous call, but we do not want it to actually wait for the, the results to come back, we want to prevent that call, prevent the call and return immediately. So that's, um, I'll show you an example here. Um, so in here, we are creating a function called save user. Um, it is a um, post call, and there's a callback function that we will execute. And in our test block, we have a post that's going to get stubbed. And by stubbing it, we can call dot yields. And what dot yields does is it immediately returns the callback function without having to wait for that route, the, the route to get called. So it, we can then say, um, can we put a, we could put a spy on callback and make sure that it was indeed called immediately. And uh, then we, set, we reset the um, functionality again. Um, so mocks is the third type of test double. And they're a little bit um, harder to use. Um, so they're like spies and um, stubs, but um, they have uh, expectations that are stated up front. Um, so when you um, want to use this, you want to be careful because um, you might make your test overly specific by expecting it to work a certain way and your test will become brittle and can break more easily. So the rule of thumb is to use it once, once per, uh, one mock per test. Um, so in, in the code example, um, it's set up a little bit differently. You still wrap the mock um, on the function. Um, on, it's usually, oh, so in this case, it's the object, and then you set the expectation on its method, and then you check the method. And then you can chain off of it based on what kind of expectations you would test for, which is how you can make it orderly specific. So the next part is um, creating fake timers. This is extremely useful if you have a set timeout function. And in, 
usually when you make tests, you have to wait for the call to be over, like the time that you um, are waiting for has to pass. But by using fake timers, we kind of fast forward in time um, as if we're already there. And then we can check um, to see that it's true. Um, so th those are fake timers. And the next one is um, creating a fake server. Um, so this is um, kind of similar to um, using like super tests um, and using agents. So we are going to create an instance of a server that has um, um, kind of like um, fake information. So these, the data is hard coded and we're going to send that response back um, as if we hit that server. Um, so then we can then um, just test the data, see what we expected, and then um, restore it back. Um, so I just want to end with the best practices when using sign-on. Um, so, so far we've been using um, restart restore to manually reverse all the functions that were wrapped with the spies. Um, but this is actually um, not the best practice because your test can fail and then it won't get restored. Um, and then this will carry over to subsequent tests. So we wrap everything um, in sign on the test so that at the end of the it block, it will clear. And because we're um, utilizing it um, in an it block, we want to make sure we call it with this and not um, sign on. And that's the end of my presentation.